What is your best practice for creating the urgency for clients to collect send documents? Good question. The best strategy that I use is that I put them first in an emotional state meaning I've done everything correctly. I build the rapport so that they can open up to me, that they're answering questions with more than just yes or no. I manufacture the correct questions so it goes to the meat and bones of the actual pain. So I ask questions, things like, besides the mortgage, what other debt are you paying, right? That would be on a refi side. But if it was like a purchase application, then I would say, okay, what's more important to you, affordability or community? right? Then they're going to say, well, what's most important is community. Well, why is that important? Because I got my kids. It's important that they go to the right school. It's important that they grow up in a safe neighborhood. So I understand that's what pushes them. But if then they say affordability, then they don't know what the hell they're trying to buy. And so I'll, I'll answer questions accordingly. But those are open-ended questions that gets them speaking and they're manufactured and tailored in a way where it's just all about them and the protection of their time and respectful of the attention that they give you. Does that make sense? So a methodical way to get stiff, like conditions and everything, is just don't give too much information. You know what I mean? Like in order to find out what's behind door number two, which is your quote, in order to make it official, in order to ensure that you can deliver it, you need to validate a few items and those items happen to be, you know, your most recent pay stub, your W-2s. And I think the challenging part of it is, is the way that LOs ask for it that makes it challenge. So if you ask Jim to go and write down this list and you give Jim damn near nine items to write down, you don't know if Jim just grabbed like a magazine, <laughs> right? Jim grabbed this one little tiny sticky note. Like Jim's all like, all right, man, I can only write nine items here, right? I couldn't fit all 13 of them. So now we made it difficult for Jim. But as Jim is writing it down, Jim is actually thinking to himself like, damn, I need that too. I don't know where it's at. And so if you just switch up the way you communicate with Jim and so like, hey, Jim, I'm gonna need a copy of your homeowner's insurance uh, page. Is it part of your auto insurance? Like, do you have this like kind of a covered policy? And Jim says, yeah. I say, okay, cool. So you don't need to find your HOA deck page. You could just get the registration right from your car, the proof of insurance. And then what will happen is my team will get in contact with your insurance agent. Unless you got a copy, that's fine. But here's an easier way, right? And then one of our conditions is I need three years or two years worth of tax returns, all pages, all schedules. I need your W-2s and your pay stubs. If that's something, then, you know, you just need to ask to make it a little bit easier, right? So one of the very first questions I always ask before I even go over that, as I say, hey, Jim, you know, your payroll system, is it online? Like, do you log online to clock in and clock out or get copy of your statements and your W-2s? And of course, majority of them say, yeah, like, yeah, I can log online and get it. Okay, perfect. So tomorrow, log online and get a copy of your W-2 and your pay stubs. I've already made it easy because I've mapped it out for Jim and I've answered his tough question of like, how the hell am I going to find this? I don't want to go through my garage. I don't want to tell D I'm a hoarder and I got 9,000 pounds of paper inside my office. <laughs> You're just making it easy for them. 